Hello everyone. Um, today we are going to be talking about carding and stripping the top coat of sporting breeds. So today I have my English Cocker Spaniel Ernie here. Uh, his top coat is all hand done. There's no clippers or anything like that involved. So we're just going to go over how exactly we achieve his natural looking top coat so that he can be shown and he's looking good. Um, so when a sporting breed is properly carded and stripped, their top coat is more weather resistant and it allows for more airflow <laughs> and a much smoother and cleaner look. So, it so there are two different methods of what we're doing. So the first one is carding and that is just taking out the undercoat. So you use a stripping knife, but we're not stripping with it. We're just using it almost like a comb and that's pulling all the undercoat out. So it's just leaving the outer coat and the guard hairs. Um, and then stripping, we're gonna use our stripping knives and just terriers are stripped. So it's when you use a stripping knife and you're pulling all of the hair off, carding is just taking out the undercoat. So mo this dog is mostly carded and then occasionally in a few spots he's stripped, but it leaves a very different coat and a very different texture. So the, <laughs> the uh, coat that we are going for ideally is a carded coat. You want to strip or card a dog on a dirty coat. So Ernie was bathed yesterday, so his coat isn't quite as dirty as I would like it to be, even though he got dirty. He doesn't have all those oils and just like dirt and stuff in his coat. So in order to help me out a little bit, I'm gonna use this really lightweight pumice stone. Um, it's called like a lava rock or something and it's meant for horse grooming. It's different than like a pumice stone that you would buy at Home Depot for like plumbing work or it's different than a pumice stone that you would work use on like your feet or something. It's meant for grooming an animal. So um, this one will wear down over time and kind of break off and that's what we want. We want it to break off a little bit in the coat. Um, that way it leaves a little bit of residue and more texture so that way we, if we're hand plucking or just using our knives it's easier to grip that coat and pull out what we want to. There are literally hundreds of different kinds of stripping knives and carding combs and all different things. Um, I only have a handful because this is my first dog that I've ever had to strip and card. But honestly what I have works really well and I like it personally. They're all stripping knives um, that I use for carding and I'd like to try some of the things out but from what I'm doing right now these work really well. So I have the Artero stripping knives in different levels of coarseness. I have a Granny Hound stripping knife that is pretty fine. I'm going to use that on the tops of his ears, on his head, and just fine tuning once I'm done. Then I have this not so fine stripping knife, um, and that's what I'm starting with. So I'm going from the widest teeth to the smallest. Um, so that way I can get out the bulk at first and then work my way down to more detail. And then the last one I have is not so much going to strip, but it's a razor blade and it's covered with a comb. So like, it's not sharp or anything, but if the hair goes inside that, it'll catch and it'll break the coat. So that's... I'm really not going to use that too much on the top of his body because I don't want to break the hair shaft. But these areas where, um, on his shoulder mainly, or his butt, where it's a little bit more stubborn, where there's some more flyaways, where it just needs to be kind of cut down a little bit, I'm just going to gently run that over those areas so that we get a nice, clean, smooth, finishing look. So right now I'm just taking that horse grooming block and going over the area that I'm about to focus on. Whenever you're doing something that is removing coat, you always want to brush, comb, strip, or card, whatever you're doing, in the direction that the hair grows because when you're removing that hair, 
it's going to grow back in the same direction. So if I did it against the grain, it's going to grow back with weird calyx and stuff. And my goal is to make his top coat as smooth and sleek as possible. So after I finish with that rock, I'm going to go in with my largest, widest tooth stripping knife and just brush through his top coat. And it takes a good amount of undercoat out, and then I'm just going to keep doing that until it no longer takes out a lot of undercoat, and I've used up my ability with that particular knife. Then when that happens, I'm just going to grab a different knife that the teeth are closer together, and I'm going to do the same exact process, just gliding that through in the way that the hair grows. I'm not pulling on the hair with my hand or gripping and pulling. I'm just gliding it through as if I'm combing the coat. And then once I'm done with this knife, I'll take a smaller tooth knife and continue the process and work my way down. Carding and stripping is something that has to happen in multiple sessions. Today I might not pull out all the hair that I want, but if I do this again tomorrow, some new hair will be ready to be released, and over time I can get my desired look. So I hope you guys learned a little bit about carding and stripping and how to actually apply those skills with the tools that you have. And if you like this video, make sure to like this video so that I know that this is something that you might be interested in learning more about and going into further detail about. Alright, always remember to live free and live fully. Have a good day everyone.